my name is Kelly McElligott and I'm one of the educators here with Biowater Solutions and I have this short tutorial on how to copy catalog with the Z39.50. Today we're going to learn how to copy catalog using the Z39. Um, we're going to go into that cataloging module here on the staff client. And from this cataloging module we have a couple different options. I'm going to focus on the um, new from Z39.50. If you were cataloging a record from scratch, you could go here from the new record. And currently I am set up to use the basic editor. Um, you can use this advanced editor and you can look in the manual for more information about that. If I decide to um, use this arrow to use the drop-down. I can choose which framework I'd like to bring that record over into my system with. Um, I'm going to choose my default framework and it's going to populate a um, pop-up menu. This pop-up box will allow me to put any of my information in the search area as well as search the targets that are set up in my system. Currently I have um, several pre-selected for me which I can set up in my administration module under the Z39.50. Um, the more targets you search, the longer it may take because it is searching a lot of catalogs. I'm going to unclick a few of these to um, speed up the process. So you can use an ISBN number if you have it. You could put a title and the author whatever it is that you are um, that you have um, for details on finding the item. So I'm just going to use a title and author and I'm going to um, click search. Okay, we have a few um, results that were found. Here is a connection timeout, and when you set up a new Z39.50 port, you can actually set a time amount that it will time out, so it won't just sit there and continue to look for it. You can pick an amount of seconds that you want it to stop looking. So it looks like I have um, three results up here from the Seattle Public Library. Um, this screen gives me a brief results. Um, I can see the title, the author, I can see the ISBN, um, and the only real difference is this first edition. I have the option to go ahead and look at the mark on any of these records. I have an option to look at the card, which is the um, card catalog view almost, and then I have the option to import it into my um, system. So I'm going to go ahead and pick one of these to look at the mark. I want to make sure that the record I'm bringing over has what I would like it to have. I want to do as little work as I possibly can, adding any more details in. So I, if I'm happy with this, if I see that there is the publisher and my RDA is here, I have some subject headings, I have a description, um, this looks like a really good record for me to bring over. Now this again brought up another pop-up, so I'm just going to go ahead and click this X which will bring me back to my results page. The one, the result highlighted in dark gray is the, mark, is the record I just looked at, so I know which one to pick if um, that's the one I liked when I come back to these results. So I'm going to go ahead and pick import, and then it it is going to bring the record over into my Koha system. Here is the mark record. I just want to point out some key fields in the mark record um, so you know what you're looking at. Each one of these is the 100, the 200, the 300 mark fields that are filled out. 
Anytime there is a question mark here, this will bring me over to the Library of Congress to give me more information about each one of these mark fields. If I wanted to add another ISBN to this list, there is this button right here that shows um, two fields on top of this, and if I hover over it, it will say, it will tell me what that means, and that's to repeat the tag. Next to that, if I click repeat the tag, it will bring me another um, field I could fill out. Next to that, there is a field with an X mark, and if I hover over that, that means I can delete the tag. The only field in my system that is required bringing over a mark record via the Z39.50 is the Koha item type, and that is found in the 9 tab. The 942C is the Koha item type, and that you can see is asterisked. I do have a drop down menu, and then Koha is asking me what item type I would like to designate this new mark record um, to, and I'm going to say it's a book. If I'm happy with my uh, mark record, I can go ahead and hit save. This is saving the mark record in my system, and now I am going to add my item information to this record. Um, here I can, it defaults to my locations that are already set up in my framework. I have a shelving location that I have a drop down menu that I can tell Koha where this is located. If I click in the date acquired, that date will populate for me. I can add the cost. I can add a call number to this record. I can add a barcode. Um, clicking in the field will populate a barcode for me. However, if your library purchases barcodes, then you can turn that preference off and you can go ahead and scan the barcode in here. Here I would put in my replacement cost for this item. And I could add a public note or a non-public note here. The item type I picked when it was a mark record is already populated here. I have a couple options on the bottom. I can add this item. I can add and duplicate, so it's going to take all the information I just entered for the item record and duplicate it and giving me a new barcode um, next in sequence. I can um, add multiple copies, and this would allow me to pick how many copies I'm adding of this item and also populating those barcodes for me. I'm just going to click Add Item. And now here up at the top, I can see the item information I just entered. And I'm going to go and hit the normal view and I can see both the bib record and the item record combined um, in my system now. It populates a picture. It has my um, mark record at the top and my holdings information at the bottom. This video is a production of BuyWaterSolutions.com. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our website or give us a call.